Hello everyone, and welcome or welcome back. In this tutorial, we will talk about sensors, and date and time in Scratch. Also, we will show you how to play with them, and make them fit for your project. So, without wasting our precious time, let's get started. Sensors In real life, our five senses let us know when something happens, so we can prepare ourselves for the reaction. For instance, if your skin touches a hot frying pan, it will sense the hotness, and you will pull your hand away. In Scratch, sensing blocks do the same. In Scratch, sensors work in two ways, they either give back true or false value, or, they give words or number values. For understanding, you can just click on them, no need to drag and drop into the workspace area. Any block you click on will show you the current result. For instance, clicking on the current year block, will show the current year and clicking on the touching edge block, will show true, if the current sprite is touching the edge of the stage. The simplest thing, you can make your sprite sense is, where the computer mouse is. You can do this, by using just the go to mouse pointer block. If you want your sprite to move just left and right, but not up and down, you can do this by using the go to x underscore y underscore block, which we already explored previously, but with some new changes. You have to put the mouse x block in the go to x underscore value. Now your sprite will just move left or right. Take a look at the mouse down block. We put the mouse down block in if conditional block. It will check if the mouse down is true meaning if you are pressing any key from the mouse while the code is running. Simply the mouse down block senses whether someone is pressing the mouse button or not. Another block that works in the player or zoom view is the set drag mode underscore block. If you set the set drag mode underscore block to not draggable, then you won't be able to drag the sprite around in the player view. It will choose the area where its blocks tell it to. The keyboard. You can also sense the keyboard, making your project sense more. Using a keyboard while playing games can make it a lot of fun like, you want the sprite to jump, when the player presses a key. Scratch can help you with that. The key underscore pressed, conditional block will let you do the same, with the sprite using your keyboard. You might wonder how this block is different from the when underscore key pressed events block. The events block works very slowly, like when you are writing in a document, and you press and hold a key, it will write the letter again and again but not fast. That's perfectly fine sometimes, but not when you are controlling the movement of a sprite. To get a smoother movement for your sprite, you will have to put this conditional block in a forever block, and use the if, then conditional block. Another difference between the when underscore key pressed block, and the key underscore pressed block, is that with the sensing block, you can press on more than one key at the same time, and both will activate. This means that, if you press the down and left arrow keys at the same time, your sprite would change x by 10, because you press the right key, and change y by minus 10, because you press the down key. This will make your sprite move diagonally down and to the right. The when underscore key pressed events block cannot do this. Touch If you are working with a touch screen, there is no mouse, in fact, your fingers work as a mouse. That means any code blocks that refer to the mouse, such as when this sprite clicked, or mouse down blocks, will start working only when your finger touches the screen. This is very similar to the mouse, but there are a few other things you need to consider that are special with touch screens. There will be no mouse movement at all for a touch screen because there is no mouse. So if you are working on a touch screen, make sure to try it out on the touch screen device. Also, on many touch screens, there is no physical keyboard, so using the key press blocks won't work. Collision Detection Scratch not only senses a key press, but also if two characters or sprites touch each other, or a character touches the mouse, or the edge of the screen, or even a specific color on the screen. Touching The touching underscore condition block will generate true or false value, depending on whether or not, the current sprite is touching whatever you choose in the drop-down list. The touching underscore condition block, can also be used to check, if the sprite is touching the edge of the stage, or another sprite. If the current sprite touches a specific sprite, maybe that means the player lost, and you can add a sound, and a message to let the player know. 
or maybe touching the edge could mean the player won and gets to go to another screen in a platformer game. Touching Colors Scratch has two more blocks that can check if your sprite is touching something else. This block checks if your sprite is touching a specific color instead of checking if the sprite is touching a specific object. The touching color underscore block works when the current character or sprite touches the specified color. The color underscore is touching underscore block looks for the first color in the current sprite and senses if it is touching the other color in another sprite or in the backdrop. There are many ways to use these blocks. Take a look at that box where you choose your color. You'll notice three bar. Color, saturation, and brightness. The color bar is pretty easy to understand. That's where you choose your color. The saturation controls how pure your color is. Zero means you won't even see the color. And 100 means it will be pure color. The brightness controls how dark the color is. Zero will be totally black, and 100 makes the color as bright as possible. Once or all the time. Sometimes you might want to check if two sprites are touching only when something happens. And later, you might want to always be checking to see if your sprite is touching something. Take a look at these two different codes, one with a loop and one without a loop. Both of them are checking if the current sprite is touching the balloon one when you press the green flag. But in the first one, there is no loop. That means if the two sprites are not touching when the green flag is clicked, then the code finishes and never checks to see if they are touching again. Even if they touch later, this code will be done so it won't notice they are touching. The second set of blocks always looks to see if the current sprite is touching the balloon one by using a forever block. Since the current sprite is also set to move 10 steps inside the forever block, the sprite will check to see if it's touching the balloon one every time it moves, and if it comes into contact with the balloon one, it will notice and say touch for one second. Distances What if you are not interested in the touching of the sprites, but you are interested if they get closer to each other? Well, there's a block that will tell you how far away your sprite is from that object. The distance to underscore block tells you the distance between two objects. For example, if two sprites get too close together, maybe you want them to change their costumes. You can use the distance to underscore block to see how far away the two sprites or characters are from each other. Current date and time block. The current underscore block can tell your sprite what the current year, month, day, date, hour, minute, or second it is right now when the block activates. You might find it useful to use these blocks in games where maybe you'll have your sprite look upset on Monday because the sprite has to go to school, or maybe you ask for someone's birthday and want to work out how many years old the person is, or just to show the date and time in different ways. You can even have your sprites do different things on different days. The day of week selection is a little weird. It reports the day as a number, starting with Sunday as day 1 and ending with Saturday as day 7. Timer Block What if you want to give more points to the player if he plays longer? Scratch helps you with the timer block. It starts counting when the game begins. An easy way to see the timer at work is simply by adding the timer block into the say underscore. Once you start your project, your sprite will start showing how many seconds have passed. The reset timer block starts the timer over at zero. You'll find this very handy if you want to reset the timer. There are a lot of different reasons why you might want to reset the timer in the middle of the game, like when you want to reset the timer when a player passes to the next level. Days since 2000 block To more easily work out how many days before or after a specific date, you can use the days since 2000 reporter block. One way you might use this block is to create a list of appointments or events. First you would figure out how many days will have passed between January 1st, 2000 and the day of your event. Then you can use some operator's blocks to show how many days between the two dates. Each time you start your project in the future, you will be able to see how many days until your event. Asking questions Sensing blocks that we study work with very specific things. The touching color underscore block 
can only tell if your sprite is touching that specific color or not. The timer block tells you exactly how many seconds have passed when it runs. There's another block, the ask underscore and wait block, that will ask something of your desire and wait for the answer from the player. When this block runs, it will ask a question on the stage and wait until the player gives it an answer and then press enter. The answer can be a number of words or even an empty response. Let's make a simple example. Add the event block when green flag clicked. Now add this new ask underscore and wait block under it. Now we want to show the answer. For that, let's drag and drop the say underscore block. Add the answer in it. Now we're ready to go. Other sensors. We've covered some big sensing blocks, but that's not all. You have also learned about ways for a sprite to find out its location, the costume it's wearing, how loud or soft the sound is, and a lot of other things. But, what if you want the sprite to know what another sprite is wearing, or where the other sprite is? Then the underscore of underscore sensing block can help you find out about things. Well, that's all we have for you in this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.